Okay, welcome to Daily Oral Language number 52. Let's put our sentence up on the screen and let's take a look at it. Okay, it's a long one, so let's take our time. I should have read the short story Colorblind, who appeared in the Ontario Review last August, said Kalia. I should have read the short story Colorblind, who appeared in the Ontario Review last August, said Kalia. Okay, the two words that should jump out at you right now are said Kalia. Again, what are the only two words that Kalia did not say out loud? She did not say said Kalia. So how do I show that? Of course, I put a comma before said Kalia. And of course, I put my quotation marks everywhere else to show that she said everything else. So I put it before I, and of course, after the comma. Now I understand, I say this every time, that the comma is not part of the sentence. There should be a period at the end of that. You would if you ended the sentence there, but you're not. You're saying Kalia said this. You said said Kalia. So because of that, the period goes after Kalia. And I use the comma to show that's the end of what she said. Let's continue. Let's go from the top. Obviously, I would capitalize my singular I and then take a look. I should of read. Uh -uh. You, can't, you can never say of after should. It's always have. And of course, if, if you want to, you could do apostrophe. I'll put it over here. Apostrophe, V-E. As long as you're not doing O-F, should have. I should have read or should have. You choose which one you want. I should have read the short story Colorblind. Okay, so we have a short story. What do we do to the titles of short stories? We put them in quotation marks. Well, first thing we'll do is capitalize it. We know that. Let's also fix the word blind. And then, of course, a short story gets put in quotation marks because the short things, things that were took a very little time to make or little time for us to read, we put in quotation marks, but we have a problem. That problem is that this sentence is already inside two quotation marks. So I've told you this before. How do we quote a short story or a short poem inside a quoted sentence? Of course, we single quote it. And that shows us that it's within quotes, but we don't double quote within double quotes because then it would mess up and people wouldn't understand where did they stop talking. So that's why we single quote it. So let's continue. I should have a story colorblind. Ooh, notice I have a pause after blind who appeared in the Ontario Review last August. So where does that comma go? It goes inside that, that singular quote mark because even though it's not part of the title, it is still part of the sentence. So let's continue. I should have read the short story colorblind blind comma quote who appeared now time out can i say who appeared no because we're talking about a short story and short stories do not get they're not people so we wouldn't say who it would be which appeared of course you can use another word begins with a t you could say that appeared but of course i like which better so let's continue i should have read the short story colorblind comma which appeared in the ontario review take a look at appeared there's two things wrong with it it appears to be wrong, pardon my pun. Yes, appear has two P's and only one R. So which appeared in the Ontario Review last August? So let's take a look at Ontario Review. Now, since it's a short story and it appeared in this thing called the Ontario Review, that tells me that the Ontario Review is a magazine, right? or a pamphlet or a booklet or some kind of, maybe even a textbook or something like that. But since it has articles within it, then it's longer. So that we would, first of all, we capitalize it. And second of all, because it's longer, we are going to underline it, just like you would underline the title of a newspaper, but the articles within it, we would put in quotes, the same thing now for this magazine. So, which appeared in the Ontario Review last August? Take a look, there are two things wrong with August. One, it needs to be capitalized, and August, even though it sounds like August, it's really August. By the way, does anybody know where we got the name August from? It's from Augustus Caesar. Anybody cares? Um, I believe we have another word from uh, from the Caesars, another month, and that would be July for Julius Caesar. And we have Augustus Caesar. Interesting stuff. Let's continue. Said Kalia. One more thing that we need to do in the sentence. And of course, let's capitalize Kalia. And let's see if we have everything down on the bottom. Let's take a look, please. We have open quotes. I should have. Remember, you can't say of. It's should have. And of course, you could put apostrophe V-E if you want to. In this case, I chose not to, so I have, I should have read the short story, colorblind. Now, please notice, I put colorblind in singular quotes. Why? Because this is already a double quoted sentence. And if I put double quotes here, then it might look like she ended the sentence there. That's why we singular quote. So you know exactly where she started talking and where she finished talking. Let me get rid of my circles. 
Excellent. Notice also, I put the comma that goes inside this sentence, inside the title of colorblind. But Mr. Kenny, Mr. Kenny, there is no comma inside the title of colorblind. You're right. But inside this sentence, there is. And that's why we put it there. Continue. Which, we can't say who, because this is not a person. And it's a thing. So which appeared, notice appeared as a double P and only one R. And the Ontario Review, I capitalize Ontario, I capitalize Review, and I underline it because it's the title of a magazine. Last August, we capitalized. Capitalize the August, we use a U instead of an E. And then, of course, said Kalia, we capitalize Kalia, and there goes our period. Very well done, everybody. Thank you very much.